Hey everyone, welcome to the behind the scenes of Kai Notebook. In this video, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of the videos on my channel. I'll be showing you how I create scripts for my channel, how I shoot the footage, how I record the voiceover, how I edit my videos, and finally, how I manage this darn YouTube channel. I thought it would be a fun way to show you guys the process behind every video I put on the channel, so here you go. Also, thank you guys so much for 20k subscribers on my channel. <laughs> We've come a long way and I honestly feel so grateful for you guys and hopefully the more the community grows, hopefully I get to create more content for you guys and to see you guys interact with each other. But yeah, enjoy the video. So the process consists of five parts. Let's dive into the first part which is writing the script. Believe it or not, most videos are actually scripted. It's kind of obvious with my dry humor. But it's kind of hard for me to just wing it and make a video on the spot. Most of my videos require some kind of structure, and creating a video outline and script definitely helps me have some sort of coherent structure. The first thing I do is I put down a video idea on my upload calendar, like this video for example. And then, after setting the parameters of the video, I start constructing the outline of the video. My videos usually always come in a structure like this. Intro first, then the body, then outro. I mean, that's actually pretty much every video in a nutshell on this platform. Never mind. Once I'm done creating the video outline, I start writing the script. This usually takes me around 10 to 30 minutes depending on the length of the video. Now, you might be asking, Kai, why don't you just use bullet points and just ad-lib from that? It's so much faster and it saves your time. Well, honestly, I would do that if I was good at ad-libbing, but I'm more comfortable with writing a full script so that I don't get lost when doing the voiceover. Finally, after dying from typing, I create my footage list. Basically, it's a table or a list of all the different footage or videos that I need to take. Usually this list is a rough estimate of what I need to shoot, so usually I shoot more than enough so that I have enough footage to work with. Now that the video is finished on paper, it's time to shoot the footage. Now remember that footage list? Yeah, the one I mentioned like literally 5 seconds ago. We'll be using that as a checklist while I go around shooting the footage needed. Sometimes the footage will be in the house, outdoors, a screen recording, or etc. I mainly have two cameras for shooting my videos. The main camera that I use is my Nikon D3400. This was sort of a entry camera that we bought and it didn't really have that much features other than the fact that it's a DSLR. I told you it's entry level. It doesn't even have a mic input which makes me really sad but hey, it does shoot nice footage especially when you buy a lens for it. And this is where the 50mm lens from Nikon come in around. And let me tell you, shooting with a prime lens is absolutely beautiful and it changes the game. Now granted, prime lenses are not the cheapest, but they get the most beautiful shots, especially how low you can go with the ISO which will always help with the video quality. The tripod I'm using is this KNF concept thingy, insert model name. This is the first tripod I've ever bought that costed over $50, but even though it wasn't the cheapest tripod, boy was this hella worth it. Before we used to have cheap tripods that felt super fragile, but this feels like a tank. Oh, this is not sponsored by the way, I'm just saying. Cause there's another sponsor in this video, wink. Usually for vlogs or videos that I need sound, I usually use my Osmo 2 for those kinds of shots. If you don't know, the Osmo 2 is like some sort of mini stabilized camera. It's really useful for vlogs because it's super portable and I can just whip it out anytime to shoot anything. This thing has many accessories as well which I use for shooting such as a mini lens, wireless microphone, tripod, etc. Once I'm done recording all the footage and transferring it to my external hard drive, it's time for me to record my voiceover. And to start that process, I start setting up my room for recording. By itself, my room reflects a lot of sound, so usually I set up pillows on the bed or this clothing rack to absorb sound. For recording, I use a AT2020 Audio-Technica microphone with a Focusrite Scarlett Solo for the audio interface. I open up Audacity for recording. I put Notion on the other split window for me to read the script, and I start recording. The process is not done even after recording my voiceover. After recording, I usually process the audio with noise reduction, audio EQ, and compression. Once I've processed the audio, I start clipping down and editing the audio file. Every mistakes, every grudgy sounds, every stutters, I remove them all from the audio. 
After a hella long editing session, I finally export the final audio file into my video folder. Finally, the longest part of the process, editing the video. Once I have all the ingredients for this video done, it's time to start editing the video. I use Premiere Pro to edit my videos. I feel like to me it's the most intuitive video editing software out there. Now granted at first it may seem hard to use but you get the hang of it throughout time. I'm still not the best on editing but I feel like throughout this channel's growth I feel like I have improved quite a bit. Usually while editing the video I would pull up some YouTube videos, a K-drama, or some music. The editing process, like it said, takes the longest. It usually takes around three to six hours straight or even more possibly. I usually put the voiceover first and then I add the footage. For my music, I have folders in my hard drive full of music for my videos, but if ever I wanted to use more music, I head online to find royalty-free music. Now, if ever my videos are sponsored, I usually integrate the sponsored segment of the video as well. Speaking of sponsored segment, talk about this segue into today's sponsor, CapCut. Now I know that the prices on editing software such as Premiere Pro and After Effects are not a force to be reckoned with, and some of you may not even have the computer to edit your videos on. Well, what if I told you that there was an application on your phone that could edit your videos on almost the same level as Premiere Pro and After Effects? Well, CapCut is a video editing application on your phone for you. Now I'm not someone who uses mobile editing apps, but when CapCut contacted me to try out their video editing app, I was like, <laughs> Damn, this is actually pretty good. Like, you know those velocity edits online of celebrities or fictional characters where the screen goes all blurry and has some sort of like a popping effect on sync with the music? You know those types of videos? You naughty fangirls. Well, just letting you know, as someone who uses After Effects, pulling those off in After Effects isn't the most easiest thing to do. Something like that would be time consuming and CPU GPU intensive. Unlike on CapCut where you can literally do that in a few clicks. Yeah, a few clicks. CapCut has so many video editing features and templates you can use. There's even a beauty filter for those people out there. So if you're interested in posting videos on TikTok, Instagram, or even starting your own YouTube channel and all you have is your phone, try out CapCut. And maybe you can start your own video editing journey. Now, do let me know if you all want to make a tutorial on how to edit on CapCut or if you want me to do a challenge where I only use CapCut for a video, please let me know in the comments below. I promise I read all of your comments. I hadn't had the chance to reply to all of you nowadays because I'm swamped with work, but I promise that I read all of your comments. But anyway, check out CapCut, you guys. Link is in the description. Sponsor segment over. Once I'm done putting everything together, I export the video and wait while the video renders on my laptop. Usually I would grab a drink or a bite to eat, or I'd play a game, or literally do anything else, then waiting in my room, contemplating about life and existential crisis. <laughs> Once that's done, finally, it's time to upload the video. But before I upload the video, first I must decide whether I should shoot my thumbnail or take a frame from the video. In this case, I'm thinking of taking a frame from the video so that it'll be much easier. So I usually take a couple of pretty frames from the video, and then I export those PNG files into folders. Once I'm done exporting those pictures, I then edit all of those together in Adobe Illustrator, finally making the thumbnail. Once I'm done with that, I upload my video on YouTube, upload the thumbnail, editing the metadata and description, and there you go. That's what goes into a Kai Notebook video. Usually the process is a lot more complicated than this, sometimes I would miss footage, sometimes there would be errors in my laptop, which is the most annoying, I swear to god. But yeah, although it's messy, I'm quite consistent with uploading videos now. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the behind the scenes of what goes into each and every one of my videos. Again, thank you so much for 20k subscribers. Wow, I... <laughs> I, I can't I can't put to words how how amazing that sounds and how grateful I am to you guys. I remember starting early this channel with like 30 subscribers and like I had like barely 30 views every video and from that time until now I'm still grateful for every view that you guys give me. You can spend time on your day just to watch me and I hope that my videos give you value and entertainment. <sighs> Please like the video.